Welcome back to Calculus. Uh, today we're covering uh, 8.4, which is trig substitution, probably my favorite section. And uh, interestingly, the math teacher who I took over for, this was his favorite section. So really a neat section, you get to think a little bit. Not, I don't think it's very tedious, although the problems can be pretty long. Uh, some of them can be tedious. But we'll focus on the ones that really are more problem solving. Um, so this allows you to simplify integrals of these three types you see at the top here. Um, the first type, this one here, you may recognize from the inverse uh, trig, uh, the integrals that revolt, result in the inverse trig functions. This might remind you of the denominator of, um, of the sine one. So that's true. Uh, this one at least, other than the square root, this might remind you of the tangent one. The tangent didn't have a square root in the denominator, you might remember. And this might remind you of the secant one, although it had the extra u out front. Um, but these really come down to, if it's in this form and the, the square root is, is not allowing you to take the integral, we can do a trig substitution that will greatly simplify the problem. In fact, it will get rid of the radical utilizing the particular um, Pythagorean trig identities. So there's three of them, right? Let me just quickly review those. Not that we're thinking about these very much, but so um, sine squared plus cosine squared x equals one. So that's the most common one. The one's by itself. The other two, the ones are with um, the tangents. And the non-cos go together and the cos go together. So make sure you're familiar with those. We're gonna use those in this section. And I'm going to just basically get rid of that though. Um, well, let's get out of the way for now. Okay. Um, so the first one, we're not gonna really get into why and all that kind of stuff we could, but we're not going to. I'm just gonna tell you the first one. Oops, if you see that, you're going to let u be a sine theta. That's the substitution you're gonna do every time if you see that. Of course, a is that front part there. Um, if you have this one, you're gonna let u be a tangent theta. If you have this one, you're gonna let u be a secant theta. And that is kind of the driving force of this entire section. So I have four example, examples I'm gonna do. The first two are is short and then medium, and then we have a two long ones. So we'll probably get the short and medium one done in this video and then come back and do the long ones in probably their own videos uh, following. So the first one, we'll call it example A. Um, is the integral of 1 over x squared, square root of x squared minus 9 dx. Now this actually looks like a pretty good um, arc secant candidate, except for that extra x. So right, arc secant would want to just have an x there, not x squared, so there's an extra x. So this is going to be a good candidate for um, arcs to do, uh, to do this method. And which one does it look like of those three up there? It looks like the third one, right? Um, it looks like the third one. So what we will do, let me check something real quick here. Yes. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, do our substitution. And I usually do this off to the side. And I actually call it a side. I got this from my Calc 2 teacher. Remember, he did it this way. And I really like the organization that it brings. So my substitution uh, we're going to use is this one. And so what's my a? So it's 9. So a is 3, right? Because it's... it's uh, that should be a squared. So it's 3 secant 
theta. So we're gonna go from the U world to the theta world. Now before I plug in, of course we are gonna need a D, um, and actually we should be calling this X, there is no U, sorry about that. Let's call that X, because we're going from the X world to the theta world. Uh, let's go ahead and do our dx right away. That's going to be three secant shares with this buddy, secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Now, I, I could, you might be tempted to plug in here and plug in there and plug in there and then simplify on your own. You could do that, but what I've found, it's so much easier to do a lot of simplification on the side. So this is how I'm going to train you to do it. I hope you follow the way I do. Actually, rarely see anybody who do it, does it differently after I show it to him. Um, so I'm going to, what I call, build this over here. I'm gonna to try to build this thing right there, okay? So what do I need? I need an x squared, right, over there? So let's get x squared. x squared would be nine secant squared theta. Um, I also need to build this. Uh, and this is the main the main part of this. The whole reason you do the substitution is you're able to simplify the square root uh, down to where there's no square root. It will work if it's if if it's set up this way. So if it's set up with the square root of u squared minus a squared, which this one is. So then I need to do I need to subtract nine from that. So I'm kind of again I'm building this. So subtract, and by the way, uh, that I will be able to plug in directly, that you'll be able to plug in directly too. So if I subtract nine from both sides, I get that, then this will always happen, every time, when you get here. Before you do the square root, factor the nine out. It'll always be a common term. And then that will always be a Pythagorean identity. Um, hey, look, there it is, there they are right there. So what is it? Uh, secant squared minus one is tangent squared. So this is equal to um, nine tangent squared theta. Well, remember what we need to do next was to square root both sides. And when you square root that, you get three tangent theta. This will always happen. And so that is ready to go as well. So plugging in now, I have everybody accounted for. We have integral of, by the way, the dx can go in the numerator because it's, it's uh, out front, so it's assumed to be in the numerator. So I usually put all this stuff in the numerator, three secant theta, tangent theta, d theta, you can put it there, you can put it on the, on the outside if you want. And then down below I have the x squared, which we said was 9 secant squared theta. I'm just plugging everybody in. And then I had the square root of x squared minus 9, which is 3. Which is 3 uh, tangent theta. And usually you see lots of stuff cancel. The threes cancel. The we must see there. The secants cancel. It's uh, one of the secants cancel. The tangents cancel. So who has remained? Only the integral of nine, nine secant theta down below. And I guess I could put the d theta out on the side again. So do you know that integral? What that is? Not off the top of your head, maybe, but the one ninth can come out front. And what's one over secant theta? Cosine theta. And now that's something we can integrate, right? That's one ninth sine theta plus c. And you might want to box your answer, but you remember, wait a second. I This started off with x's. I need to go back to x's. So what's my relationship between x and theta? Well, this right here is kind of your original statement that related x to theta. Go back to that. And um, this is where you're going to want to, this thing is in my way again. Oops. Get this out of the way. Um, what I usually do is I call this a 
side two or even just a two because I have another kind of calculation to do off the side. How does theta and x relate? Well, again, that is my key. Let's change this up to different colors. So I wrote up there, let's just rearrange that. I know that secant of theta is x over 3. I just divided both sides by 3, right, from here. Um, therefore, what is theta? Actually, better, what is sine of theta? And this goes back to something we did in pre-calc last year. We did this very thing. Um, so th to find out, if, if you know secant theta is x over 3 and you want to find sine of theta, um, what you can do is draw a right triangle. Draw a right triangle. And um, call an angle. Let's pick one to be theta. Don't worry about if it's acute. Just don't worry about if it's a, you know, a big or small angle. Just go with it. And if secant of that angle is x over 3, then what is remember what sec secant is the reciprocal of cosine cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse so this is hypotenuse over adjacent if it makes you feel more comfortable you could always do this cosine of theta is 3 over x right because cosine is a reciprocal of secant so i'll take the reciprocal of x over 3 and do it that way so now the question is what is sine of theta well sine of theta is opposite whatever that is over hypotenuse so I need to find the opposite side. So I need to do the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, let's just call this, I don't know, we'll call it question mark. So the question mark squared plus three squared equals x squared. I won't make you show this. We're gonna do this so much, you'll be able to do it in your head probably pretty soon. That's gonna be x squared minus nine, which is familiar, right? That was from the very beginning. It's gonna come back again. This is x squared minus 9. That looks like it's a fraction now. That's confusing. So I'm going to get rid of that. That becomes x squared minus 9. And so then I can say that, sorry, sine of theta must be square root of x squared minus 9. No, you cannot simplify that. If you could have, it would have been simplified in the beginning but you cannot simplify that over x. Take that, we bring it over here. So our answer is uh, 1 ninth times square root of x squared over 9 over x plus c, or we could write that a little bit nicer as square root of x squared minus 9 over 9x plus c. And that is trig substitution. Let's see how we're doing on time here. Um, I think I'm going to stop there, actually. Um, so we might do a couple of other quick ones. But that's it. Uh, so hopefully that makes a little sense. We're going to do some more examples coming up that involve the sines and the tangents. But there's not one that's really easier than the other in these. Um, but this up here you definitely need to know and be ready to use. And that's kind of the process. You build it off to the sides, you plug in, you're going to see lots of cancellation occur. Uh, oh, before you plug in, this factoring step right here always happens. After you do that, you always factor.